Warm greetings from CNS. Welcome everyone to today's special webinar in the lead up to World No Tobacco Day 2019. End tobacco, an imperative for health justice. In all humility, we dedicate this webinar to the memory of our mentor, colleague, friend, and inspiration, Yul Francisco Dorado, a fearless tobacco control and human rights leader from Bogota, Colombia, whose timeless legacy continues to guide us in our work. Yul was the Latin American director of the corporate accountability and part of Network for Accountability of Tobacco Transnationals, or NAT leadership. As we know, World No Tobacco Day is observed around the world every year on May of 31st. The member states of the World Health Organization created this day in 1987 to draw global attention to the tobacco epidemic and the preventable death and disease it causes. Before I hand over the mic to our guest moderator, I would like to make a few housekeeping announcements. I request the participants to keep sending their questions and comments, even as panelists present and not wait till the end. You can click on the Q&A box and not on the chat box, please. Please click on the Q&A box, which you must be seeing on your screen and then type in your question. If you wish to speak, please click on the virtual hand you see on your screen once the open session begins. In the event of some questions not getting answered due to shortage of time, be welcome to send your queries directly to the panelists later on, whose email IDs we will share with you. I now welcome our guest moderator for today, Ashok Ramsaru, a widely acclaimed award-winning journalist based in Durban, South Africa. He's a senior, he was a senior producer at South African Broadcasting Corporation. Over to you, Ashok. Greetings from the port city of Durban, South Africa. More than 7 million people die due to tobacco use annually. Every tobacco-related untimely death could have been averted and every tobacco-related disease prevented. Tobacco is a common risk factor for major non-communicable diseases, NCDs, such as the world's biggest killer cardiovascular diseases, CVDs, including heart disease and stroke, cancers, diabetes, chronic respiratory diseases, etc., which account for over 70% of deaths worldwide. Okay. Beko also bleeds the global economy by two trillion US dollars every year by way of hot health care cost and lost productivity. Tobacco also devastates the environment. For example, cigarette butts are biggest man-made contaminants of oceans globally. The smoke from cigarettes, water pipes, hookahs, etc., pollutes the air we breathe. And all this is despite having proven interventions to affect all stages of the tobacco cycle. It is just a question of using them decisively. 193 countries have promised to deliver on United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, and over 180 countries have ratified the Global Tobacco Treaty, World Health Organization, WHO, Framework Convention on Tobacco Controls. Governments have promised to reduce NCDs by 25% by 2025 and one third by 2030. End game of tobacco is vital to prevent every tobacco related NCDs and other diseases. Holding tobacco industry legally and financially liable must not be neglected any longer. Well, we just got breaking news. Uh, Pretoria-based advocacy group, Hashback Take Back, the tax uh, applaud the decision by the South African Revenue Service postponing the deadline for a controversial cigarette tracking system. Recently, shared concern that the proposed new system will fail to crack down thoroughly on South Africans' multi-billion rand illegal cigarette trade. This measure would leave SARS still unable to collect up to 8 billion rand in taxes due to the illegal cigarette trade funds 
which government desperately needs to deliver on its core mandate. Shortly, we will hear more from our distinguished guest, uh, speakers on why end game of tobacco is imperative for health justice. We are indeed honored, honored to have with us an eminent galaxy of experts. Our, sorry. Shortly, we will hear more from our distinguished speakers on why end game of tobacco is imperative for health justice. We are indeed honored to have with us an imminent galaxy of experts. Our first panelist is Dr. Kirsten Scotter from the World Health Organization, who she is a medical officer in the Department for Prevention of NCDs at the World Health Organization. We also have with us Professor Surya Kant, who heads the respiratory medicine department at King George's Medical University, KGMU in Lucknow. Professor Surya Kant is also the president of the National College of Chest Physicians, president of Indian College of Asthma, Allergy and Applied Immunology, and past president, president of Indian Chest Society. Our third panelist is Professor Rishi Sati of the Cardiology, Cardio, Cardiology Department, King George's Medical University. Professor Sethi is on the Executive Committee of Cardiological Society of India and is a member of Asia Pacific Society of Interventional Cardiology's Scientific Committee. He is also Executive editor, ed editor of Heart India Journal and is also on the Editorial Advisory Board of India Heart Journal. Completing today's formidable quartet is Dr. Ramakant, a WHO Director General's World no Tobacco Day awardee and founder, leader of Vote for Health, formerly known as Indian Society Against Smoking. Internationally acclaimed Professor Ramakant was, pre was president of the Association of Surgeons of India and vice president of the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation Surgeons. You can also follow the all important webinar on CNN's various social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, podcast, webinar, Instagram. I now hand over to our Citizen News Service Executive Director and Managing Editor, Shobha Shukla, 2018 HIV Prevention Research Science Fellow and IAS 2019 Science Journalism Fellow. It's over to you, Madam Shobha. Uh, thank you, Ashok. Uh, before our panelists begin discussions today, I would like the participants to answer a question which they can see on their screen now. Uh, what is the safe level of tobacco use? You have four options and you can take only one of them and you get only 15 seconds to do so. And your time starts now. Come on, be quick, poll your Zero. vote, have your say. Zero. Uh, this is an anonymous poll. You have to just stick on no. there. <laughs> so the time is up. Okay, let's see. Well, the correct answer is zero. Dr. Ramakant had let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> there is no safe level of tobacco use. And moreover, all forms of tobacco cause preventable diseases and premature deaths. Now, please close the poll window so that we can listen to our panelists. I invite our first panelist for today, Dr. Kirstein Scott. Uh, sorry, Dr. Kirstein Short, I think that is the pronunciation. Uh, sorry, Kirstein, please correct me no, for no, no. the pronunciation. Uh, I invite her to set the ball rolling. Uh, Dr. Short? Yes, thank uh, you very much. Thank you for, for inviting us to this panel. It's really a privilege for us to be able to participate in this webinar. For us, it's so important to get the word out to the world on how dangerous tobacco is, because as we just saw from this poll, I think there still is a lot of uh, a lack of knowledge about the dangers of tobacco. Many people think that everybody knows by now how dangerous smoking and tobacco use is, but some results from the Global Adult Tobacco Survey, for example, show that in some high, low and middle income countries, 
more than 50% of the people that were asked were not aware that tobacco causes cardiovascular disease, for example. So there is still a, a huge lack of um, knowledge, and we're very happy to be able to contribute to uh, getting the word out. So thank you for inviting us. And I just wanted to start on this global number that we heard before, uh, seven to eight million die each year from tobacco. And I just want to put that into perspective and, and wanted to ask maybe the people that listen in, if anybody knows how many people each year die overall of any causes, natural causes, infections, any diseases. So that number is, I think, relatively surprisingly small. It's 57 million people that die each year in the world. And if you think that of these 57 million people, 8 million are completely avoidable uh, premature death by tobacco, that really puts, puts it into perspective, I think. And of these 8 million people, 1 million people die just because they breathe in secondhand smoke. And uh, that is something, I think, a very high number that uh, we should work on getting the food. That is uh, from me for the opening statement. Thank you. Oh, th thank you very much. Uh, and uh, really uh, mind-boggling to see how many are still dying due to no fault of theirs. Because uh, paying for other people's sins, that is, who are dying due to secondhand smoke. Uh, our next speaker is Professor Dr. Surikan. Head of Respiratory Medicine Department, King George's Medical University. Uh, Dr. Surikan, the theme of World No Tobacco Day this year is tobacco and lung health. Uh, tobacco has major implications for the lung health of smokers and non-smokers globally. Uh, in your clinical practice, you must be dealing almost every day with patients uh, with problems related to negative impact of uh, tobacco use on people's lung health. Uh, from cancer to chronic respiratory disease. Can you please share with us how tobacco end endangers the fundamental role of lungs for the health and well-being of people? I have mailed my PowerPoint. Can you uh, display my PowerPoint? Shobhaji, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. yes. I think we are yes. putting it my on. Power, my PowerPoint are already with you. Can you, okay. Can yeah, you... we, yes, yes. We'll be setting it up. Okay. So thank you very much, Shobhaji, and of course the Citizen News uh, Service for organizing this wonderful webinar uh, with the international faculty of repute on this occasion of uh, World No Tobacco Day that is being celebrated on 31st May throughout the world. Since 1987, every year 31st May is being celebrated as World No Tobacco Day. And if you consider the Indian situation, Indian scenario, uh, can you have the slide? Uh, can we have the slide? Yes. Actually, in India, people people think that India and tobacco they are. Uh, actually related time old. This is not true. Tobacco in India has only 400 years of history. This tobacco is introduced by Port Valley's traders in about 1600 AD. And this was offered to Emperor Akbar and then hookah was invented. So this was the first tobacco form of using tobacco that is the hookah form. And then a lot of development occurred, and then tobacco civilized, tobacco cultivation, and later on taxation introduced by Akbar's son Jahangir. So, this was the story of production, agriculture, farming, and taxation, and tobacco as a revenue. And this revenue is continued from Jahangir till date. And now, India is the second world's second largest tobacco producer and as consumer as well. China is the world's largest tobacco producer and consumer. The annual production is around 300 million kg in our country and mostly grown in few southern states of the state like Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Telangana. And around 0.25% of India's land is being used for the tobacco cultivation. And around 26 million Indians work in tobacco industry. So it's a good uh, platform for providing the employment to the people. 
so that is the uh, one aspect of the indian tobacco profile i can say and if global scenario that has already been described so i will not go into the detail except that total uh, there are 110 uh, crores of smokers and in india if you see there are 120 million smokers or you can say 12 crore smokers and tobacco kills nearly 10 lakh people in india each year that is comes 1 million so 1 million that they are attributed for the tobacco uh, consumers and 90% of men 2% of women and 10% of all adults they are the current tobacco <coughs> smoker in this country and i will not go into the detail of the uh, this survey that is called uh, global alert tobacco survey i have already talked about the smoking this, there are uh, of course more people they are using smokeless tobacco that 21.4% of adults they are using the smokeless tobacco and 4% adults they are using smoking form of tobacco as well as the mix form that is the chewable form or smokeless tobacco so that is the mixed three types of variety in india smoking form smokeless form and the mixed form and as i mentioned the 1 million deaths and tobacco leading to 25 lakh threatening diseases and about 40 types of cancer so this is a very threatening situation in our country 40 types of what cancer one cancer is enough for for taking or death for taking or life but this leads to 40 types of heart cancers and 25 of lung cancer diseases the 50% of smokers die due to smoking related illness world leader in oral cancer india is the world leader in oral cancer so every third oral cancer is from india 45 lakhs heart disease cases occur per year due to this smoking and tobacco use and 25% heart disease strokes are attributed to smoking and 40 lakh lung diseases per year so this is uh, i can say the morbidity profile due to smoking or tobacco related uh, ailments and that's why it is said that tobacco kills more people each year than alcohol cocaine crack heroin homicide suicide and fires and aids combined together so this is a major chunk of the mortality i will not go into the detail of the tobacco they it contains around 70 carcinogens and 7000 odd chemicals and it does not contain any useful or the product important for the health so this is the only product in the world which is having all products that is harmful for the health and that's why it is said you can have tobacco either tobacco or health you cannot have both together uh coming to various forms of tobacco used in india these are the smokeless tobacco form pan with tobacco gutka a uh, manpuri tobacco mawa khaini mishri isnaf zarda so a lot of innovations they have been occurred in last one century in india and that's why you will find a lot of variety of smoke tobacco and smokeless tobacco bd chillam hookah cigarette and hook uh, and so many other things other types of even smoke form of tobacco so a lot of variety and innovations are here and in indian context bd smoking is that is peculiar to the this developing country so bd smoking is very common in this indian continent including india india pakistan bangladesh nepal so that is more common form of uh, using smoking form that is called bd and that is cheaper also and that's why in developing country it is more common than the cigarette so that is a unique form of current use of smoking in this part of the country in this part of the world and as we know that there are 7000 odd chemicals in the cigarette smoke so one cigarette contains more than 7000 odd chemicals which all are harmful for the health nothing is important for the health and they contains almost 70 odd chemicals which are supposed to be the carcinogenic means leading to the 40 types of odd cancers and ultimately to death and that's why contributing a significant mortality also check the slide okay the second hand smoke already uh, have been taken by my previous speaker on this issue from who the uh, around one around two third of the people of the adults were exposed to second hand smoking at home and around one third of the adults are exposed to second hand smoke in public places so that is second hand smoking is very important uh, risk factor in india people they don't care whether they should be smoke inside the home or not whether they should smoke before their colleague or not they are used, they are smoking and that's why creating a lot of exposure to the second edge smoking or passive smoking and it has been studied by various research 
vapors that is second hand smoking or passive smoking is as harmful as the active smoking so it is not a it is second hand smoking but not a second grade hazard the third hand smoking is called the environmental tobacco smoke that is the left over smoke after the first hand smoking and second hand smoking so third hand smoke or passive smoke is also harmful so that's also a problem it is permanently damaging our environment this is also called as environmental tobacco smoke or ets so ets is permanently ruining our environment and causing and exposing the uh, normal innocent people innocent children innocent women for these health hazards can you change the slide madam shobha ji can you change the slide yes yes, yes. so so check check ha uh, this this the environmental tobacco smoking is a term coined by the binikoff and this is also a significant problem carcinogen found in third hand smoke are known as tobacco specific nitrosamines and these nitrosamines also carcinogenic please change the slide next please and these are the hazards of smoking so i will a little bit devote uh, time on this slide please previous one so even then the can the hazards of smoking you can see you see uh, most of the males they think that when if they are smoking they are smart they are attractive one but i would say that it leads to male impotency it leads to in females it leads to early menopause and miscarriages it leads to increased alcoholism decreased sperm count so decreased fertility birth complication peptic ulcer stroke dementia peripheral vascular disease heart disease myocardial infarction wrinkles early graying of the hairs osteoporosis copd aggravated asthma tooth and thumb problem And, and a lot of cancer i said for the early mature premature cataract formation macular degeneration and so many things next please so cigarette smoking is very harmful you can see a lot of things i think every organ of the body is affected by so many ailments of the uh, health next please so a lot of risk from smoking and you can see that if you are using the non smoking form that is chewel form so a lot of oral cancer and oral manifestation and other than uh, there are also important aspect next please so tobacco and lung health is the theme of the world no tobacco day 2009 and this campaign will increase awareness on negative impact of tobacco on people lung health from cancer to chronic respiratory diseases fundamental role of lungs play for the health and well being of the people next please and of course the lung cancer the chronic respiratory disease the 8 out of 10 copd deaths are attributed to smoking next please so lung cancer chronic respiratory diseases tuberculosis and across the life course in friends also exposed in utero to tobacco smoke toxins although maternal smoking or maternal exposure to second hand smoke frequently experience reduced lung growth and function even in try try death and try try growth retardation this has been observed due to the passive smoking or active smoking by the mother during pregnancy and young children exposed to second hand smoke are at risk of the onset and exacerbation of asthma pneumonia bronchitis frequent to or respiratory tract infection next please and this you can see the god has gifted the beautiful lung you can see the pink and healthy lung but what when we smoke how lung appears you see in the next picture next picture please next slide please this is the smoker's lung you can see that normal pink healthy looking lung becomes a tarnished tarnished blackish lung destroyed lung non functional lung decreased function lung and that is how we are damaging our lung every smoker is now suggested that you just see this powerpoint just see this slide how god has gifted you normal healthy lung and you have converted into a disease lung so this is the company next please yes next please she was very much interested to compare the healthy lung and uh, this uh, smoker's lung so this is the uh, team next please what no tobacco to 2019 next please and don't let tobacco take your breath away and that's why choose health not tobacco not smoking next please so the goals of world no tobacco day 2019 are raises awareness on risk posed by tobacco smoking and second hand smoke exposure awareness on particular dangers of tobacco smoking to lung health magnitude of death and illness globally from lung disease caused by tobacco including copd and lung cancer emerging link between tobacco smoking and tuberculosis deaths feasible actions and measures that key audiences including the public and governments can take to reduce the 
risk to lung health caused by tobacco. Next, please. So, in conclusion, we can say tobacco is the strongest addiction in the world, and it is increasing, especially in developing countries. And India is a developing country, so we are concerning, and that's why CNS and Shobaji and our team is, of course, has organized this beautiful program. Mortality is very high, mainly to 40 types of cancer and 25 diseases. Pharmacotherapy sometimes may be helpful for its own cessation. But India, we have done a lot of research on yoga and pranayam that also help in putting cessation of tobacco smoke. And Department of Respiratory Medicine, King George Medical University is running a tobacco session clinic for more than one decade. And it's also running a yoga and pranayam session for this tobacco cessation. Thank you very much for providing me this wonderful opportunity on World No Tobacco Day session. So make every day World No Tobacco Day. And that is how we can we can lead to the tobacco free world. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Surikant. Our next speaker is noted cardiologist, Professor Dr. Rishi Sethi. Uh, Dr. Sethi, I remember that the focus of last year's World No Tobacco Day was on tobacco and cardiovascular diseases. Uh, some water must have definitely flown down the drain since then. Uh, please tell us how and why tobacco continues to break hearts and what is being done or needs to be done more to prevent that. Over to you, Dr. Sethi. We can't hear you. Uh, please unmute yourself. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yeah, now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yes, very clear. So, um, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone here from uh, Lucknow. And um, uh, thank you, Shobhaji and CNS, for having me here on this panel today. Um, I think um, I just take help from a few of my um, uh, the slides, if you allow me. Yes, please. Uh, I take help from a few of my slides to explain. Uh, So, uh, so I think Professor Ramak, uh, Professor Surikant has spoken about um, the use of tobacco and its ill health on respiratory system and lung health. And what I would like to do is I would just skip most of the slides because I would not like to repeat the statistics that have already been spoken and we all know about. But um, I would just like to point out a few salient features taking help from these slides and that um, the data as of 2015 and 16 in Indian subcontinent states that around 20% of Indian males are uh, smoking above the age of 15 years, that is, and it contributes to around 13% of deaths um, in, in males. And uh, uh, though the topic on the focus of this year's uh, World No Tobacco Day is on uh, lung health. I, for one, would stick to my conversations on the ill uh, effects of tobacco and smoking on cardiovascular health. So the good point, I mean, the uh, thing is a little encouraging for all uh, the people who are engaged in uh, anti-smoking and uh, reform activities is that the slide essentially states that if you take a look at the lower panel, if you quit smoking, your chances of malignancies um, actually do not tend to ease out too soon. But if you quit smoking, then over a course of next one to three to five to 10 years, your cardiovascular health seems to get uh, better and it can actually become equal to uh, a non-smoker at the end of 15 years if you have been a reformed smoker. So. Uh, quitting smoking actually does have a very, very positive effect on cardiovascular disease, and that is sort of um, an incentive for uh, the smokers uh, to quit. And uh, uh, this is a very interesting slide because tobacco causes uh, mayhem in the cardiovascular system because of many mechanisms. If you take a look at the top panel, it activates the clotting mechanisms, which lead to an acute coronary syndrome, it formed thrombosis in, um, in your myocardial, uh, in your coronary arteries and it caused myocardial infarction. It can raise blood pressure and cause peripheral vascular diseases. It can cause blood uh, abnormalities of higher catecholamines level, insulin resistance, abnormalities in the cholesterol levels leading to cerebrovascular diseases. And it can directly affect the, the vessels of um, the, the body and can lead to aneurysms and things like that. So, Almost all 
spectrum of cardiovascular diseases can have, um, uh, you know, uh, will have some sort of a, uh, you know, ill effect by the use of tobacco and all the related products. Now, uh, many a times when we talk about tobacco use in India, um, and this is something that Professor Ramakant has always told us that it's not only the smoked form of tobacco, but it's the oral consumed, um, oral form of tobacco that is very common. And apart from, we all used to think that oral tobacco is more of a, you know, a risk factor for malignancies of um, uh, the, the oral cavity and, and larynx probably. But what we have seen, and this is a very special thing that I raised last year also, is that uh, whenever we see, this is this if you see on the left-hand side panel is a normal right coronary artery making a smooth C-shaped curve. But what we are seeing that those people who are consuming oral tobacco in terms of gutka and things like that, somehow there is some chemical in that or direct effect of oral tobacco. It has not been pointed out at yet. But these people tend to have these aneurysmal ectatic coronary arteries. To the tune, uh, we are publishing a study. We have a total pool of around, uh, roughly around 90 such patients. And um, what we are seeing is we are trying to decipher if there is any particular chemical in, uh, that is mixed with the oral tobacco in the form of gutka that is giving rise to this kind of picture. And so, um, so much powerful is the association that many a times when we see such a coronary artery, and we asked the patient that, do you consume oral tobacco? And he just goes on to say yes. So it is something that needs a little more research. And, but this is the kind of picture that oral tobacco is doing for cardiovascular coronary arteries. Uh, we also know that many a times, we always debate that cardiovascular diseases tend to occur in Indian at, um, uh, at an earlier age, and they are more complex in nature. Many a times, People in their 20s, in their 30s, in their early 40s are suffering from very bad coronary artery disease. And uh, it has been, you know, these people do not have any traditional factors for coronary artery disease and they pre prevent, they present just suddenly out of the blue. So, of course, genetic factors and other environmental factors may be playing a role. But we did this study and it was, a, it was an oft-quoted study in 2008 where we studied uh, that what was those people who were belonging to the lower socioeconomic class who were young and in age group uh, and they were having acute coronary syndrome and we found that these people have higher degrees of inflammation, the low grade inflammation in their body as depicted by a high, uh, higher levels of high sensitivity C-reactive protein and most of these people tend to be smokers. So there's some sort of a uh, association between smoking, uh, low grade inflammation in the body, poor oral hygiene, low socioeconomic class and all of these kind of, kind of, kind of play an intermingled role with each other and try to uh, you know, cause the inflammatory activation of the coronary plaques and leading to acute coronary syndrome. So uh, we were all talking about the secondhand smoke. There's also a thirdhand smoke that we must worry about, which gets the tobacco and tobacco byproducts that gets accumulated in carpets and grapes within our cars and they contain much, much more harmful substances sometimes than the tobacco smoke itself. One of the factors that has got, that has, uh, you know, um, this is a report in 2014 in the US Surgeon Journal, and it states that the reduction in smoking in US men from 50% to 20% and from US uh, females, from one third of the US female population to 15% is one of the major factors that has contributed to a decline of cardiovascular disease. So if we quit smoking, if we decrease the overall prevalence of smoking and tobacco consumption in the community, at least from the cardiovascular point of view, uh, the results are very, very robust. And since cardiovascular disease are the most common cause uh, of mortality globally, any small reduction in this particular thing will have a profound impact. And this is again a pictorial representation to see that the, uh, the good effects of quitting smoking starts within hours to minutes, and within 15 years, if you continue to uh, be a reformed smoker, then your disease of coronary artery disease has almost become equal to a non-smoker. So uh, WHO, of course, we have discussed the goal of reduction in 30% by 2025, and that would lead to almost prevention of uh, four, uh, 38 million premature deaths, and most of these deaths would, uh, would be prevented by prevention of cardiovascular death, uh, deaths. This is what my my view is.
Many countries are an inspiration where all public places are completely smoke free. And we have to take these inspirations and take these things forward. We have to cut down on surrogate advertising. And um, that's it from my end. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sethi. Uh, indeed, we cannot let tobacco break our heart or take our breath away. We have to choose life, not tobacco. And who else can be more befitting than Professor Dr. Ramakan, a WHO Director General's World of Tobacco Day awardee, to help us understand this and elaborate upon this. Welcome, Dr. Ramakan. Thank you very much, Shobari. It was very nice listening to so many experts like Rishi and Dr. Suri Khan and Christina. Now, I would start by saying that uh, what I feel is that tobacco control has become a conundrum. It's a very difficult topic. It looks to be simple. People say it is easy to you know, quit. But I even understood that the main factors which have been discussed yet now, and we have been talking, there's something more than that. And I will place it like this, that it's still what we are finding in many diseases, many problems, we come out to it, have a proper treatment. In this, in spite of the treatment, what we are finding is that to no standard, successful, very successful method has come. The reason for that possibly is in not hitting at the root. And the root is cannabis of a family. Now, uh, friends, I will definitely, I said this thing to emphasize in my slides to, about it. Okay, what is the role of the family, both in addiction and in, in growing up the addiction and also on the same time quitting also. This is a very great role of society and, and also family. Now, regarding hazards, Dr. Sori Khan and Rishi very nicely covered. So I'll just say, in a very short way that the hazards can be there for self, for himself, or it can be for his family, for environment, and then it can go to the societies and go to the state, the nation, and the whole world for that matter, and whole environment. What is important, not only this, next generation may also be harmed, and even non-living things like the filters in, in the aeroplanes can also be damaged, and they may cause accidents. Friends, uh, all these things you have heard, but it's very important to keep on repeating so that everybody remembers that half of its users die, 50% people will die, one third of the world population is tobacco addict, one third of the population is poor, and one third is suffering from tuberculosis. Possibly these three things are interrelated. Now, the figures about 7 million people are dying, with all you what you heard from experts, and I will say that by dying prematurely, these patients, they deprive their families of income, they raise the cost of healthcare and hinder economic development. Next, please. Now, uh, what I wish to, just yes, please. WHO recommended, and this part has been already well said, the government and communities must unite together to uh, achieve the SDG. And SDG by 2030, 25, 30 percent should be reduced. Cont countries should fully implement the control, which gradually is coming up. I'm not saying 100 percent, but people are coming up now. And parents and other family members of communities should also take measures to promote their own health, that of their children, by protecting them from the harms caused by tobacco. Next, please. Next slide. Yeah. Now, this has been covered, but I'll just say what is important is that uh, we, uh, we, we cannot forget that the second-hand smoke is also raising the incidence of cancer in lungs because it's not only the primary uh, smoking, but secondary smoke also, and even maybe the third one. And uh, 4 lakh 30,000 people died from lung cancer in the European region, and more than half a million new cases have been known. So therefore, this indicates the the colossal, the colossal problem which we are going to face. Next, please. Now, more important now will be to understand emerging trends of you know companies they are producing something like they they called called as IQOS. I mean, I quit ordinary smoking, and they produce something by which they they you know raise the temperature of the tobacco up to even three fifty degrees centigrade, and then they have made an equipment by which you can charge by the battery and then it is only heated. So there is no passive you know, smoke coming out and therefore they start saying that this may be less dangerous or it may be not dangerous society. It's a very important question to work out. And then electronic cigarettes, juice or vaping, 
vaping is causing very severe damage in the lung due to the level of popcorn, popcorn lung and the, the people will suffer from these things. We have to be very cautious about the newer ways by which they are trying to cross over our legal innovation status. Next, please. Quitting smoking reduces the risk of lung cancer at 10 years or 15 years after it becomes almost nearly it becomes like a non smoker, but 10 years it becomes half. Chronic respiratory diseases and uh, uh, obstructive pulmonary diseases, they, they are very common with these things which are very, very quick of them. Next, next week, I will to, like to talk on the health aspects in this way physical, mental, social, emotional, and spiritual. My attention will be more on, more on emotional and spiritual part, which I just covered in a few minutes. Next, please. One of the five deaths in male in, is tobacco induced in our country, and one of 20 deaths in female is tobacco related in our country. Next, please. Next. Now, what is most important? Quitting benefits. This has been proved scientifically by a large number of papers. The best way to limit harm due to tobacco is to quit now. And quitting is doable. It's not impossible. It is doable. And it is a good economy. Tobacco cessation can succeed. I have experienced enough to speak on this with authority that if workplaces provide free to the employees, we should be able to you know, convince them. Now, I will show the intensity of the addiction. See, one unconscious patient during anesthesia, this video runs, I think. But just see, within seconds, you will see a person who was going under anesthesia for surgery was still trying to take out, you know, rub tobacco in hand. Just see. That shows how intense addiction is. He's trying to do the same which he was doing when he's conscious while he's being operated for some very emergency problem. Also seeing that hand and then he's doing the same what he was doing as a conscious person. So very intense, one of the toughest addiction to remove. Next please. Next. Now this is one hazard which I want to definitely show. This is called as the submucosal fibrosis, where you find not only teeth are damaged, but they cannot open their mouth. And ultimately, it leads to cancer. So this is a very difficult problem in, in oral chewing or, or you know, smokeless tobacco, which is very common in our country. Next, please. I'll show you some photographs of some hazards. This is a patient who used to keep the squid under the tongue. It developed lung, the tongue cancer. Next, please. Just to give an idea that what type of you know melodies are, are happening, just see a person who has got a fungate into the tumor has secondary you know come into the lymph node, which got burst out, the bleeding is occurring and he is an eternal stage of his life. Next please. See another person who is to have the squid into the in between the lips, in upper lip, and you can see that they develop the cancer. Next please. Now here you can see a person who had the laryngeal cancer and because of this, this lady, she, she started doing all this smoking and developed a laryngeal cancer, so she under, had to undergo tracheostomy. This is a very bad situation because lady started following the smoking and as it's already been said, that if they live like men, they will die like men. It's unfortunate to see. Next please. Next please. We are seeing all these advanced cases of the or cancer from uh, which has gone beyond. Just see, tongue cancer and involving the whole of the lower jaw and is almost impermanent. See, India second, India is second. India, sorry, can you see the last slide? Previous one. Oh, okay. I just wanted to say that wrinkling on the faces is speaking of their emphysematous status. Most of the time it is linked. So smokers are in, in India, you find is just next to the US and wrinkles are indicator of the FIC mark to some extent. Next please. Now what I was talking is here. This scene has disappeared in, in the children who are above this age. Disappearing scene means the emotions are going off, the, the infection is going off and love is going off. And therefore what is happening is that people are feeling a sort of scared atmosphere, unresolved issues, and they feel frustration, depression, they become excitable.
they are not able to control themselves and they start fighting they start going into the addiction initially it may be any reason for starting and smoking but the nutrition the fertilizer which is given is given by atmosphere that is whether it's the canvas of family or the environment outside but this is actually the factor which is happening because i've been seeing lot of patients and i find that this is a regular phenomenon next please tobacco cessation it's a very important issue you talk of tobacco control you ask them to quit then where to go so therefore tobacco cessation i just try to summarize in short that first of all you have to grade the the intensity of addiction grading they call the effect strong psychological assessment is done by clinical psychologist then counseling is an individual it may be stresses and triggers family counseling then you can use yoga meditation herbal acupuncture religious faith leaders they can also make an impact planning a date of cessation is very important if you don't declare a dream you can never complete it you have to plan it declare the date family counseling is done so that they all accommodate accordingly and use children or some important event for cessation i have been practicing in schools and colleges and i was quite successful in that way then pharmacotherapy and buprenorphine therapy treatment of comorbidity all these issues are important next which pathy is successful somebody can ask it i will just say in short allopathy homeopathy herbal and whatever you talk of acupuncture or whatever i said and you add it no pathy is successful unless there is sympathy remember the person who is talking to quit he should have vibration should have positive attitude he should have the authority he should have that confidence that it is possible it can be done then only it is effective next please and many of my patients they told us that they did it for the kids because i incited them i did somebody said i did it for my health somebody said we did it together to remain together instead of divorcing and separating and i did it for the freedom that i don't want to be entrapped and i did it and i feel great i did the practice so many things were there but friends i can tell you very important that the person who is trying to tell them for quitting should himself should be emanating vibrations which are going to affect in my practice i always ask for tobacco smoker or for not a smoker or for cure and then i always give time to every patient and you will not i believe i believe i really feel honored when the families keep on coming that he has left tobacco and he's not using it and they are excited they are happy they are enjoying that thank you very much to all of you uh thank you dr amakant uh we now open uh, the question and answer session and invite the participants for their comments and questions uh, you can click on the question and answer box which you must be seeing on your screen and then type in your question uh if you wish to speak please click on the virtual hand you see on your screen once uh, the q and a uh, session opens uh now uh, we uh, just before we invite the questions Uh, we have uh, a special guest with us today uh, and that is pro, uh, dr gilarda uh, dr gilarda uh, we will just uh, uh, we'll just wait for him to be there and dr gilarda is one of the first doctors in india who started who tackled hiv uh, and uh, he uh, he he's an hiv expert who's credited with starting india's first aids clinic in 1986 uh welcome dr gilarda please share your thoughts with us thank you uh, regarding uh, what you are doing in your own special way uh, to for the end game of tobacco we are very pleased to have you with us today yes dr gilarda you see uh, firstly primarily i am myself a total tobacco chewer non smoker non drinker and somehow when i started the Uh, continued medical education program and national and international conferences and workshops i made it a point that because we are collecting money from people and when we are going to spend this on uh, alcohol or smoke uh, during the conference that is so wrong so it was a philosophical question asked to myself that should we do that and then i realized that uh, i was swimming against the current a lot of people 
did not agree to my point of view and they were uh, saying that oh, who are you to stop us uh, and basically all medical conferences are known for uh, alcohol and uh, smoking you cannot stop that hello am i audible yes yes, yes very hello, hello 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 yes you are audible yeah so uh, yeah so i was swimming against the current and initially it was like uh, one against uh, all and uh, slowly, slowly my clout was increasing and then now we can see medical council of india or major international uh, multinational pharma companies and even indian companies they have their regulatories uh, they take signature from all the organizers that you are not going to promote alcohol or smoking during your conference and you cannot put on any any bills related to smoking and alcohol on the conferences so basically now it has it has become a mandate for all um, uh, national and international conferences avoid smoking and to, uh, smoking and alcohol in their uh, uh, in their uh, uh, kind of conference or social gatherings during the evening of the conference so i think it has been uh, i don't say it's a great achievement but we are on the path to achieve a great deal uh, thank you very much, Dr. Gilada. I think it's a great achievement. <laughs> and still, all the con conferences are not free from that. And it is important uh, the, that you are emphasizing on that there is no safe level of tobacco and alcohol use. And why should we be dealing with man-made epidemics when we have bigger problems on hand to end AIDS and TB and malaria and hunger and poverty? Yes. And, uh, yes. yes. Why, why to waste something on and uh, uh, quitting tobacco and alcohol which is very much in our hands and can be done totally over preventable yeah yeah totally preventable yeah yeah good initiative thank you. by you thank you uh, and we have lot many questions which are already there uh, so our first question is from wesley kumbenda from malawi uh, wesley says that there is enough evidence that tobacco is a common risk factor for many non communicable diseases and the world's biggest killer Yet, how come cigarette companies are mushrooming and allowed to invest in countries all around the world? Why not just ban production of cigarettes? And we have a similar question from Celine from International Institute for Legislative Affairs, Kenya, who says, one question that we keep getting asked from stakeholders we work with at grassroots is how can tobacco use be stopped or even banned completely? Why can't we do, do that? Uh, Dr. Kirstein, would you like to say something on that? Yes, and thank then, you. Yes. Thanks. Yeah, we get this question a lot, and I think it makes sense. We heard before tobacco is the only legal product that kills half of its users. So I think it's quite intuitive to ask yourself, why is it not banned? Well, uh, I think the experience with banning alcohol in the U.S. shows uh, that it's not really to do it and not really effective. There are also other illegal drugs like heroin or cocaine that are banned in many countries, but still the use is very high. So in our view from the World Health Organization, we have the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, and we know if countries implement it, and if they implement the demand reduction measures at the highest level, then tobacco use will go down. And it has been achieved in many countries around the world. So I think we have the measures in our hand to reduce tobacco use, to prevent illness and death, but countries need to adopt these policy measures. And uh, on the other question about the tobacco industry, yes, so it's a huge industry. It's very resourceful. Uh, they know exactly what they're doing and how to do it. They intimidate governments around the world to not put in place these measures. And this is why we're seeing countries lagging behind. They don't have, they have not yet created smoke-free environments. It's still, uh, children still grow up seeing tobacco advertisement everywhere. They're getting free pro products as a gift so that they get hooked on the nicotine. Um, yeah, because countries get intimidated. They get um, uh, threatened with lawsuits by the tobacco industry and some countries are not able to stand up. Luckily, uh, Bloomberg Philanthropies, together with the Gates Foundation, have created a litigation fund where countries can access that fund to defend themselves against the tobacco industry. Uh, thank you. In fact, there is a, 
Another question for you, Dr. Kustin, uh, from Tariro Kodatsa, Zimbabwe. Uh, Tariro is from Development Aid for People to People and wants to know why cannot it be made mandatory for governments to tax tobacco industry towards universal health coverage, especially in the low and middle income countries? Yeah, great question, because in fact, taxing tobacco products is a phenomenal win-win, as we call it here, because what it does is two things at the same time. It increases government revenues that can be used to prevent tobacco use or to cover universal health coverage. And at the same time, it reduces tobacco use and especially prevents young people from taking up tobacco products. This is one of the measures making tobacco products less affordable that we really uh, work on with a lot of countries and we advocate uh, for that in a lot of our work. Yeah, so um, we can't make it mandatory. There is no uh, rule that we can put out. It's of course up to governments, but uh, we have six economists in our team that only uh, do that. They work with governments around the world and try to convince them uh, to make tobacco products less affordable by increasing tobacco taxes. But as you can imagine, and related to my previous uh, comment, the tobacco industry, of course, they are on their guard and uh, they are lobbying governments against raising taxes. And unfortunately, very often they succeed. Uh, we have a question for uh, Dr. Rishi Sethi from Beryl Osindo. She's a CNS fellow from Kenya. Uh, Beryl says that uh, for a person who has been smoking for a very long time, uh, there is this pungent smell uh, which comes uh, from them when they are when even they are not talking or smoking at the moment does this have any serious health implications for people who interact closely with them uh, most importantly toddlers who live under their care and is this by any way related to third hand smoking i mean i would not say that uh, if it's coming from their oral cavity it is probably but then uh, the the smoke uh, may have settled down on their clothes that they have been wearing. And, and if that is the condition, then probably it will, act, it, it, it will amount to a third hand smoke. But otherwise, just the smell per se coming from the oral cavity uh, should not really be a health hazard risk. Of course, it's a social, a social you know, problem and that should be, uh, I don't think so, it should be a health risk. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have comment from Dr. Maka Bababla from Grassroots Initiative for Youth and Elderly Development Organization, Tanzania. Uh, Dr. Maka says we need to educate the community more on health hazards of tobacco, especially in rural areas. Uh, Dr. Kirstin, you also mentioned there is a huge lack of knowledge in the people. Uh, so yeah. where are we lacking in sending correct information across to the public uh, to help make them take informed choices regarding their health. Uh, we would like all our panelists to say something on that. I want so to I be the Yes. I brought something with me. I don't know if you can see it. It's quite a famous poster around the world. It's called the, it, it used to be called the Smoker's Body, and we're just releasing a new version, which you see here for World No Tobacco Day. It's available on our website, which is now called the Tobacco Body. Um, so it, it shows on a collage the health effects of smoking um, and also smokeless tobacco use. So we, we're really trying to make this available around the world, this poster. And another, another measure that we are promoting is health warnings on tobacco products. These, uh, if they are large and graphic, they have been proven to increase quit attempts for people that are already hooked to tobacco use and also making tobacco products less glamorous because many uh, tobacco companies, they use the package to as advertising tool. They make it shiny and beautiful and slick. And we want to um, take that away from the tobacco industry by making the package more ugly, really showing what tobacco does to you. And the best measure that countries can do is the so-called plain packaging that we already see in Australia, for example, where the package is completely gray and uh, takes away all of advertising aspects. Uh, what? Uh, thank you, Dr. Kirstin. Uh, again, uh, would other panelists also like to say something on how do we uh, increase that level of knowledge and awareness in the common public? 
So, Bhaji, I would like to say yes. one thing, very yes. important. What I have heard, uh, uh, felt during, you know, large number of school programs and uh, colleges programs, mm -hmm. that there is a spectator or audience bias. What happens mm -hmm. when you are having a sort of, you know, a delivery by some priest, then good people go and listen. It was meant for bad people, but they don't go. Similarly, when we are talking in schools and colleges and in uh, in factories and uh, offices, only those are listening. They are sitting and listening. Those who want to leave or who are not smokers. Unfortunately, this audience bias or this bias by the spectators, it is so much there. And one biggest hurdle, which at least I feel in our country, a lot of people understand, they understand everything. And this is the biggest hurdle in learning. We have to expose ourselves and understand that we do not know everything. And therefore, what is happening is we keep on talking, telling them impact has come, but that is not in proportion to the efforts made. So that is one of the important things. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so how, how do we overcome that? This can be overcome by following exactly the same thing which is done by the commercial people. Always, besides this, should have some entertainment, something else, and some star person to come and speak. Famous person, right? Like you, you can come and speak, then people will listen. It happens, and if you bring some newcomers and those things, then it's not there. So, the star person should always be there for mm -hmm. talking. Then you follow all those things which are rampant in our country or any other country. That you can use them, religious people also. You can use the motivational speakers, and you have to make them entertaining. Education can't be dry, and when you're educating something based on a very deep-rooted problem, then you have to be following the same thing, that not only words, but vibrations should have come out, and you can use the people of different levels to achieve this thing. Then it can be better. All right, thank you. Uh, we have a comment from GC Mathur of, of Binti, which is a voluntary consumer organization. Uh, Mr. Mathur says we need to reduce tobacco production to control its consumption. And the Indian Tobacco Board should change its role from promoting tobacco production to helping tobacco farmers to switch to growing other crops and help in the processing and distribution of those crops. I think that's a very valid comment which he has made there. Uh, Vipin Thampi from Indian Cancer Society wants to know, uh, the, Professor Ramakant has all, had also mentioned the I quit ordinary smoking products that electronic cigarettes have been in the market since the last 10 years and their usage has increased among adolescents and school going children. Why are there still no regulations on e-cigarettes uh, in, in a country like India? Uh, what do Dr. Surikant uh, and other panelists say something on that? Ban of electronic cigarettes. Because on all issues till date you have till time you have discussed. First time coming on the ban on tobacco. Hmm. You see, ban on tobacco is a problem for whole of the world because of the two reasons. Number one reason is the revenue created by this tobacco industry, and number two is the employment. In India, the revenue generated by tobacco is around one lakh crore rupees. So that is a big huge money that is being raised by the tobacco industry. The second issue is that around 30 million, they are the employment given by the tobacco industry, from processing to farming to selling everything. So this is the issue of one lakh crore rupees on the one hand, that is called revenue. And the second is the three, 30 million people, they are getting the jobs out of this industry. So what is the alternative of these two things? The alternative was made very much clear. The former and late Prime Minister of India, Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee in 2004, however, he unfortunately didn't come back into the power and ultimately he died last year. He advised the tobacco producers, tobacco farmers, those involved in the agriculture of the tobacco at that time, that please don't involve into this production of poison. This is he called as a poison and please replace it by flowers. So you should produce more flowers in your land rather than producing tobacco. So this was his suggestion. It's still valid in 2019 after the 15 years of his statement in 2004 as the Prime Minister of India then. The second issue, 
that is the advocacy that is the the awareness among the people if you see the religion is the most important powerful tool by which you can disseminate anything in this country or anything in the world the religion the we can utilize this forum for medical education for creating awareness for example i will give you the one example the sikh community although 0.5% population of this country is not using is smoking by any way because it is prohibited by its religion so similarly if the we can create awareness among the religious leaders that please propagate in every prayer in every time every gathering that don't get involved in tobacco consumption the unfortunate part of that that religious leaders are not doing this rather most of the religious are themselves involved in the using tobacco products so on this forum we have to create the awareness and the second is the social leaders social reformers the uh, public representative from gram pradhan to the member of parliament they can also involved why not you go when the public meetings you say only one word that please don't use tobacco products for your health for your good health so all kind of leaders especially the religious leaders the advocacy can be done the third thing about the e cigarettes e cigarettes are coming up and i used to compare e cigarettes like that 30% burn is beneficial than 70% burn means 70% is always leading to the death mortality once you are having 70% burn doctor will say the doctor mortality is there or on more than 90% mortality is there with the 70% 60% burn but it doesn't mean that 20% burn is useful you can say it is less harmful but but the burn is burn it has damaged the body so e cigarette are also harmful although less harmful but they should also ban and the government of india the supreme court of india they have already not advocated that they should not be advocated thank you yes uh, thank you uh, professor surikan but i'm sure the government can government cannot absolve itself of the responsibility uh, because in india in a few states alcohol is banned sale of alcohol is banned but I, but there is no state which has taken that step of banning tobacco products why so if alcohol can be banned constitutionally why cannot be banned tobacco products i think that is a question which the government needs to ponder over uh we no have political will yes so political yeah. will yeah. is also yeah. important because if they can ban alcohol i think they have they can ban tobacco so, as well shobha ji you keep on doing such program the day will come when one state will come out and will ban the tobacco okay. this is my promise <laughs> We are agreed, running out agreed. of time. We are running out of time. We have one more question. Uh, another question from Ronald Supal from Cape Town. Uh, she wants to know what strategies have shown to be most effective in helping smokers to quit, and what progress is being made in government's tobacco cessation efforts across different countries regions. So maybe Dr. Kirstein would like to say something on that, and then uh, Professor Ramakant and uh, Surekant. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, the bad news is uh, tobacco uh, smoking is very addictive, tobacco use, so quitting is hard. Uh, about 3% of people who try quitting achieve it. Uh, but we know there are some measures that can help people, that, that can increase these quit rates. One is nicotine replacement therapy. So to give to the pot body the nicotine that he is craving, either by patches or by chewing gum that contains nicotine. So we suggest to governments to make this available, if possible, free of charge. Another measure that can help is if doctors or healthcare providers provide brief advice to quit, to set, for example, a concrete date when patients want to quit and to prepare them, what can they do if they have the craving. And then last but not least, there are also prescription medicines like bupropion, that can help uh, with the craving and then can increase the rates. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Ramakant, would you like to say something? Uh, definitely, I would like to say that uh, I have experienced everything what scientific has been taught, the grading, and then do psychology as role and everything. But I tell you honestly, speaking, the most effective method is either use children. I always persuade children to fix up a date some birthday or something, and and then that time they they have to request the parent who have to be really prepared by us in a very different manner so that they leave it. It is very important that if you do not correct the cause of it, root cause, 
root cause most of the times is depression or frustration. That has to be really counseled out. And doctor's role is colossal. Just asking somebody that do you smoke, the patient immediately correlates the disease with that, and one to eleven percent becomes with success or equal. One to eleven is a good success. And if a doctor gives time, I'm giving it and I feed it, it is a really sort of you know a very success for me that they come back and the whole family celebrates here that they have left it. The reason for that is very important. And regarding and this uh, nicotine patch and those things, I've tried this also in many patients. It's called a nicotine, you know, therapy, replacement therapy. But I tell you that nicotine patch addicts became, they became nicotine patch addicts. Nobody can know if they are still using nicotine. A small patch is lying in their back. So they started becoming and creating another problem. It's required only in very severe cases. Otherwise, most of the time, the most important thing is counseling and removing that reason and making them to understand life better, de-stress themselves. And this, these things can help. And I, I feel the success rate will be high besides education. Thank you very much. Uh, and in regarding the revenue, I think we need to remember that uh, uh, 1.4 trillion US dollars is the economic toll of tobacco epidemic to yes. the global economy every year, which is way big, much more bigger than the revenue which we earn from tobacco products. And the Indian Council of Medical Research data also showed that tobacco revenue was very little compared to the cost of treating cancers caused by tobacco. So we need to remember that. And Dr. Dilip Acharya uh, wants to say that there should be no health meat which has alcohol or tobacco. So all yes, health sir. conferences and meetings should not uh, promote tobacco or alcohol in any way. It should not be part of the conference uh, as Dr. Gilada has been doing over the years. Uh, and we will close with a comment from our CNS fellow, Catherine, uh, a journalist from Zimbabwe, who says, I look at the lethal tobacco growing in the fields, the dangerous sprays used to eliminate pesticides, the health warnings on packs of tobacco products, and yet such a product ends up in so many lungs and in the environment, causing irrevocable damage. It should not be so. It is really sad. So we now, we have already overshot uh, the time by quite a few minutes. We come to the close of the webinar, hoping that we will all contribute to make every day a World No Tobacco Day. My sincere thanks to all our panelists for an enriching discussion. We are grateful to our participants for their lively engagement with the webinar. And last but not the least, special thanks to our guest moderator, Ashok Ramsaru. This webinar was dedicated to the memory of our mentor, colleague, friend, and inspiration, Yul Francisco Dorado, a tobacco control and human rights activist from Bogota, Colombia. The webinar was streamed live on CNS Facebook and YouTube, and the link to the webinar recording and podcast will be shared with all our participants very soon. Let us not forget that tobacco is devastating in all its forms, be they conventional cigarettes, e-cigarettes, IQOS products, chewing or smokeless tobacco. We should not be, have to deal with the tobacco epidemic. It is very much possible to end tobacco so that we are able to focus on bigger problems which cannot be dealt with overnight, like ending AIDS, TB, malaria, and so on. So thank you and have a restful weekend. A restful, not weekend, but a restful week, rest of the week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very Thank much. You. Bye.